Today I'm going to show you a few different uh, types of test tiles that I like to use. So first off, sometimes a test tile just ends up being something that you can't use. So this bowl has a crack in it, so I ended up putting two base glazes, it's easier to see on the outside, and then a bunch of the same glazes on either side. So I've got like this really good test where I could try out a bunch of different things. Um, a while ago, I wanted to test out some stuff with underglazes. So this was an underglaze test that I was doing where I was kind of mashing up all the colors. But um, I have a few different kinds of tile tiles that I make a lot of so that I can test different things. So the first one is a flat tile. This is actually porcelain and, and a white stoneware because I wanted to see what the underglazes look like on them. It was easy to use a flat tile for these because the um, glazes don't move. So it was a good test to see how they worked. And I also did things like I layered three layers of the underglaze, two layers of the underglaze, and one layer so I could get a sense of how they worked um, for thick and thin. And basically that was just brush strokes. So that's one kind. Another kind was these uh, hand-built test tiles that I did, which I'm actually gonna show you how I made them. And then the last kind is a wheel thrown test tile. Uh, so let's start with the hand built. So I have a slab of clay here. And one thing you want to do is make sure that the thickness of your slabs are about the thickness of what your pots would be so that you're getting a true test of the um, glaze, you know, so that it's a similar thickness to your pieces. So first I'll show you, I mean, I guess it's pretty obvious how these flat ones were made. I just took a uh, a um, slab and I cut out this is a little wider than I meant and I just cut out um, you know some flat pieces so you can do whatever shape that you like this this probably won't will be a little too big to shrink to that size and I do try to get them about the same so they'd be like about this big because the, the clay shrinks 14% so now I have this um, slab. So that would be one kind of test tile. So I use that for things where I'm not looking to see how the glaze moves and maybe where I want to layer, you know, put a few different things on one tile. Then this other one, which was pretty easy to make, is just a folded tile. So I, I've i got this over here. Let's cut a piece. And I'd say they're probably about that tall. And it's a good idea. Um, I don't know if you can see there is some texture on this tile, so you'll want to do that. So I just took a um, a wooden tool and I went in both directions, so you could see how glaze would move um, where it pooled and lines going across, and how it would pool going down. And then you just take it and I have to think about that sometimes. You just fold it, and you're like, well. Why is she doing that? Well, for two reasons. One, to give it something to stand on. And two, if the glaze drips down, oh, I should have had one of my tests where that happened, it should hopefully land at the bottom. See how that just pulled there on the bottom and not on your shelf. So that's what you're aiming for. I put holes in them originally because I thought that I might end up hanging them, but I'm probably not going to hang them. Uh, so I'm not going to worry about that now. Another thing that's nice to do, which I don't have the right numbers for here, is to, um, if you have these number stamps, these particular ones are from Zeeum, but there's tons of number stamps out there that you could use, you could then stamp the clay number on the bottom of here. So now I, what I do is I make a bunch of these and I bisque them, and then I have all these tests to, that I can use when I'm working. So I can just make a big pile of, as you can see, I have a big box of them here and I can just use them as I go. So those are the hand-built ones. I mean, I also do things like I test with ornaments, like this is two different, uh, this is on um, the same clay, but I used a matte um, glaze on this one and a clear glaze on this one, and you know, you have these ornaments which you could use, or they're just tests, however you wanna deal with them. All right, so then the next thing I'm gonna show you, so now I've shown you the, this, the flat, flat tile, and the hand-built one. And if you're a wheel thrower, then you might like this one, which is new for me. Um, but I really like it. So I'm going to show you how I do that.
So I'm over at the wheel now and I'm going to make um, these test tiles. Obviously this is a different clay and you can see that there's a um, the tile going up and then I have like a base on either side so it sits nice and balanced. And there's some texture on here which I'll put onto this cylinder that you see I'm going to throw, this bottomless cylinder, after um, it has dried some. So I won't, I'm not going to show you that in the video today. So I, I um, have about three and a half pounds here. This is really hard clay. I recommend using a soft clay and not this hard clay because of what we're about to do with it. And um, I also think uh, the amount of clay that you use is really dependent on how big you want the tiles and how far out on the bat you want to go, how big a bat you have. So I, I've used three pounds, three and a half pounds, four pounds. They're all, you know, slightly different in size, but it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to open up um, all the way down to the base. I'm just putting my thumbs against each other to try to get it somewhat centered because of the nature of what we're doing it doesn't really matter if it's completely centered it just makes it easier but these are going to be cut up in little pieces so it, it makes no difference in their tests right so now i'm going to take my hands um the center finger is doing the majority of the work but these two are on either side of it and i'm going to pull towards myself i've got my finger digging down on the inside of the cylinder to help me move as you can see, it's very difficult. And sometimes I switch to my other hand and I'm doing the same thing. Pulling tart towards myself. And it helps sometimes to have water, which I don't usually throw with a lot of water, but for this, I'm gonna do that. And the other thing is I, I like to keep this uh, low and flat because I wanna make sure that I have a good base that I'll use for the, you know, the, that will be the stand part of it so water definitely helps so here we go so you might have to do this a couple of times to figure out how much clay you need for the size of tiles that you want to make and how far out you want to push it and of course I like to push it all the way <laughs> I don't know if you're like me but yes I'm gonna go as close to the edge as I can because that gives me the most amount of tiles for this okay and then I'm going to just push this all down because I want to, uh, my hands are on either side of it and I'm just pushing and then I'm going to, whoops, <laughs> flatten it out a little. Not flatten, that's not the right word, but just get it to be like a wide, there we go, low wide ring. All right, so let's clean this up a little. Some of that extra out of there so you can see what's going on. Sorry for the arm. So as you can see, there's no bottom to this ring. So now uh, what we want to do is we want to leave some clay for a base. So I, instead of starting at the bottom like you normally would, I'm starting maybe halfway up the ring, you know, just so that you leave something. And I'm doing that on both sides because you want that my hand is slipping. There we go. So as you can see, I'm forming a base over here and on the inside, there's a little base over there too. And I'm then I'm gonna pull the clay out. And sometimes you have to compress it to get, you know, to stay somewhat even. Doesn't, as I said, doesn't help any that I've got really hard clay. And then the idea is you want to pull it up to about the um, thickness that you normally throw at so that these would match um, your uh, pieces, the pots that you make. And then that way you, the glaze would be a true test of the glaze. You would apply it the same way you would to your pieces and it should hopefully be enough to give you an idea of how the glaze works. It's never 100%, but it at least gives you something. And again, I don't care that this ring is off. I'm just trying to get it to the 
thickness that I throw it. All right, so I'm going to clean this up a little on the inside and the outside. I'm using my finger. Um, you could use a wooden rib, uh, I mean a wooden knife to do that too, however you normally do. And, um, and then I'm going to let this dry a little bit, and then I'm going to put, pull a wire through. And that's kind of a pain because, you, you know, it's pretty low profile you want to get through. So you want to make sure to be as close to the base as possible so that you don't mess it up. And then when it's gotten to sort of a soft leather hard, I'm going to just take a knife and I'm going to slice down and I'm going to have all these test tiles. It's pretty cool. I just, this was a new thing for me and I really like it so far. Don't forget to put some texture on here because it's always nice to have some texture for, to see what the glazes do. So that's all for now and I will oops, rinse my hand off a little bit. See you next time. Thanks for watching.